Power 106.7. Live and direct. Let's go. DJ Quick performing live tomorrow night at the West Coast Fest Tour. Yo, what up? This is DJ Quick. Double J. Love your face. That's what I'm talking about. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Quick is the name. <laughs> Did you really have to whoop MC 8s ass? No, we never got into a fight. We, um... I mean, we, we, you know, we postured a couple of times, like, man, what's up, what's up, what's up? But when it came to the fighting, it wasn't really necessary. Like, when you think about it, it was awkward, too, because in my heart of hearts, I really wanted to work with him, you know, because, you know, he had a gold album before me. They were successful before me. So, no, nah, there was no fighting. I mean, you know, and, and, and it's crazy, too, because back then, you know, gang banging was really like serious. So, you know, it was some it was some issues that happened behind the scenes that was kind of crazy and a little bit, you know, hairy. But uh, no, we never fought. Now you were responsible for a lot of Death Row's hits. Why did you never sign with the label? Uh, I never signed with Death Row because I was in this ironclad contract with Profile Records. Steve <laughs> Plot, Nikki, and Corey Robbins. I mean, responsible for yeah. uh, Rob Bass and Easy Rock, Run DMC, uh, Poor Rex's Teachers. But they had these contracts back then. You know, that was the one thing. Even though the 90s were the heyday for hip hop, it was also the heyday for getting robbed out of them. You know, so we got we got fucked over a little bit, but they, they wouldn't let me go. I wanted to actually sign with Death Row, which probably would have led to my death. I probably would have been in that car with Tupac and got my head shot off too. So you really feel like Death Row was the demise of Tupac? Well, I mean, it, it was more than that. It was a if you think about it, it was a it was a perfect storm of a lot of incidents that went down. Partially too because of the media. I mean. I, I wanted to stop doing interviews in 1995 because I saw that, you know, the source in Double uh, XL wouldn't stop with all the uh, negative press. And I knew, I knew we were all going, we were all going to catch heat from that. Um, nobody would stop. It was like we tried to do positive interviews. They didn't want that. They just wanted to fuse who was hating on who. Let's keep this East Coast West Coast shit going. But so ultimately, you know, we lost all, we lost the real major players. Have you ever had to whoop somebody's ass that was doing an interview with you just because they wouldn't stop with the questions? No, I, um, but you know, I, I do have this thing now to where. You know, I I do let most people know that if you ask me the wrong question, we will come and find you and we will fuck you up. Like, I'll, I'll be honest, there was this, this mother in uh, Tucson, Arizona, named Haters, Mech Hater. And this mother leaned into me so crazy. I was like, this dude, this ain't even about radio. This is personal. This is about a personal attack on David. I know DJ quick for a minute. So I wanted to get back out to Tucson to get up to this radio station and take my boys up there and pretty much wipe the whole building with them. But as we were on our way to Tucson from Compton, caravanning, this motherfucker got a job in Atlanta. He took his chance and walked ass up there and did his thing. So, you, know, you, know, you know what all black people do when they move to Atlanta. You know, Atlanta is the gay mecca. Well, I'm going to skip my next three questions I have for you, DJ Quick. <laughs> no, I do. I, I, I ain't going to lie. I got some crazy motherfuckers up with me that's ready to get it kicked back up like 1995 again. When you come here to Albuquerque, can you guys go to the club with me? <laughs> <laughs> you, need my, you, need, you need my security? Yeah, I yeah. need your security, but just because I want to walk in a club one day and just go, what, you punk? What? And exactly. then like, oh, by the way, I'm hanging out with DJ Quick and his, and his partners. What? <laughs> yeah, 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 you already know how that's going to play out in the media. DJ Quick starts a riot in a, in a new, what is it, a new no, Albuquerque, no, no, no. New Mexico club. No, Quick, we'll blame it on our intern, intern Mitch. Yeah, we'll say yeah. intern Mitch started. We'll plant all the guns in a Saturn. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> as, long as, as long as all my boys got bad damage on their face, you can use <laughs> Hey, let's talk, let's talk about talk. I'm a huge talk. Talkbox lover. I love Roger Troutman. I play the Talkbox. Do you still play Talkbox? Because let me give people that are listening a little backstory. If you just tuned into the program, we're talking with DJ Quick. You got taught to play Talkbox by Roger Troutman. Is that correct? Yeah, actually, I, um, it was before I worked with him. I bought a Talkbox in uh, 1993, I believe it was, because um, we wanted that sound and we got tired of sampling Roger's stuff because at that point, Sampling became illegal and expensive. Right. So at, at that point, you know, it was easier to just try to try to learn it. And boy, when I first picked it up, I mean, I really sucked. Like, it, it, it didn't sound like talk box at all. It sounded like retarded box. Hey, honestly, quick. When you first did it, though, you're like, dude, this is, I sound legit until you went back and heard it, huh? And you're just like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> it, 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 sound, it, it sounded like... Sounded like I had the pipe too far down my mom's in my throat. It was just wrong. I had this one uh, guitar player, Robert Bacon, who was now in the MD for um, our senior hall show, the dude with the wild hair. 
Robert Bacon showed me how to articulate with it. Right. And he was like, yeah, you gotta do this. You know, you gotta exaggerate your face. I'm like, I don't know what that quite, what that means. I was too cool back there. Right. You know, but so I listened to a lot of Roger and um, I started to, you know, just copy his thing. You know what I mean? And I got it to a point to where it was close enough to go ahead and record. And after I recorded it and released my tape and channel record, Roger heard it. And we had met before um, in Las Vegas. We did a concert together in Las Vegas. But when he heard it, he gave me my, um, he gave me props. He was like, he was really impressed. He was like, you do it well. So we hung out. And when we hung out, he blew my mind. Like Roger is the most, he was the most incredible musician I'd ever met. The single greatest guitar player on the planet and inventor of a lot of other things outside of just the talk box. He used to build his own talk boxes, which was it's ironic, man. This dude was special, but he gave me props. We ended up working together on the Tupac All Eyes On Me record. And, and you know, that was a master stroke of an album. And we call it. We call it lightning in the bottle. It'll never happen again. I think we'll all be dead and gone. You're going to be out here for the West Coast Fest here in Albuquerque on Friday. Can we expect any talk box? Or because when he passed away, you said, I- I'll never play the talk box yeah. again. Yeah, and then I got I came under heat for that. I was just like, well, why would you stop? Like, I'm supposed to keep it alive. So I, I-, I picked it back up. And I went and bought a Moog Voyager. I got- it's ironic. I got some hell of a toys. I got a Moog that uh, Roger Moog actually signed before he died. You know, Robert Moog, brother. And he signed me, like, Silver Sharpie, one of the special ones. So I use them together. And it's, uh, you know, it's like it's like a voodoo trick, man. When you play that thing, it's like you bring in spirit, both of the spirits back. Wow. What can people expect at the show this Friday? Same old thing tonight. It's perpetual DJ Quick. You know, I'm a folk musician. I'm a guitarist. I'm a pianist. I'm one of the best motherfuckers that ever do this business shit. But I, you know, with, you know, being humble, Motherfuckers know what I've done. People know that I've helped Dr. Dre with some of the incredible Eminem and 50 Cent like as well because Dre's been telling him, you know, even though he's moved on to accessories, he's, you know, he's still one of my favorite musicians, producer dudes. But motherfuckers don't know that when it comes to that line, I'm up there with the top five of them. And can't nobody take that away from you. You know what I mean? One final question for you. Is DJ Quick single or is he locked down? I got bitches. You know what I, mean? I like, ah, I, like the I like having this shit because even if you can't find the perfect one shit, you can get what you need out of three or four. Man, you preaching now. And you just got me stabbed by my wife. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Quick, thanks so much for hanging out with us, brother. We'll see you Friday night at the West Coast Fest Store. You got it. And that's how it's done. Wake up, wake up. Wake up with Double J in the morning. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Weekdays, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. On Power 106.7.